Good evening. My name is John Morgridge. I'd like uh, first to uh, have a little round, additional round of applause for the talisman. I think they provided us with a terrific uh, kind of a global serenade to kick off this two-day conference. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this, the third Global Philanthropy Forum. Uh, as is, has been in the past, so it will be the next two days, you are in a so-called fundraising free zone. Uh, any solicitations, uh, you have to go outside. You can step out the front door and it's, it's all right. In, uh, in the uh, era of full disclosure, I did want to introduce, uh, alert you to the fact that uh, at many of your tables are members of the Net Hope Consortium. This is a group of 12 NGOs that uh, have brought their CIOs together to collectively solve the technology and networking challenges that they face as global uh, uh, philanthrop in their global development organizations. They represent about three and a half billion dollars. I wondered if they'd just stand. <laughs> the purpose of this meeting, as it has in the past, has been a chance to share ideas, best practices, successes and failures, and to discover ways to be more strategic in your giving. It is an opportunity to meet people who have the, f the similar goals, but perhaps have different perspectives. And it is an opportunity to build new partnerships among us. We have people to thank for making these two days what we hope they will be. And I'm sure they will based on the last two conferences. First off, uh, most of the panelists will be spending the full two days with us, volunteering their time uh, and their efforts, their resources. They, sh they will share their strategies with you. The panelists and other leaders in philanthropy are dispersed at all of your tables, making this, in effect, a group of all head tables. Uh, so I hope that you'll have stimulating discussions as you enjoy your dinner this evening. Every table is indeed a head table. I want to express special thanks to Chip Blacker and the Stanford Institute for International Studies for allowing us to use this wonderful facility as we did last year. It's a great place to hold this kind of a, a meeting. Uh, lots of room for uh, getting together and interchanging our ideas. I hope you will join me in thanking Interjet Karana, who uh, provided the table favors this evening. She founded the train platform schools in India, and she arranged to have these small tokens of hand-wrought animals uh, brought as special table uh, favors. Would you please stand? <laughs> right over here. Thank you very much. We also owe a special debt of gratitude to the members of the forum, uh, their advisory council, its steering committee, and the 11 foundations that are the underpinning of this conference. They have allowed the GPF to evaluate its progress and to lay its course for the future. Last and most importantly, I'd like to thank Jane Wales, President of the World Affairs Council. <laughs> Jane, as many of you know, is the managing partner for the Global Philanthropy Forum. She and her team have shaped its strategy, have recruited the many speakers, the excellent speakers that we're going to uh, hear over the next couple of days, and have worked with the steering committee to design this 
very unique program. So I'd like to ask her to come up and tell us what we can expect in the next two days, what's ahead, and why. Jane? Thank you. Thank you, John, um, and welcome to the Global Philanthropy Forum. I think the easiest way for me to prepare you for what's ahead over the next two days is to really quickly describe a problem um, and then suggest a solution and then say a word about your role. Uh, the, the problem is that all societies are experiencing really rapid, fast-paced change, and some are collapsing under the pressures, under the weight of it. Um, it's change that you will, you will hear about uh, tomorrow, the, the fact that it's driven by some really spontaneous and unstoppable trends, like the information revolution, economic globalization, population surges. Um, and we don't know that much about uh, the interaction amongst these trends and, and what their effect is. But we do know that dislocations are occurring. We do know that inequities uh, have emerged. And we do know that a new set of dangers face us, like, like terrorism, like emerging infectious diseases, um, like environmental degradation, climate change, state failure. Um, and these are dangers that, that no single state, no single society, no individual can solve alone. That's the problem. Here's the solution. Just as those trends are kicking up a new set of dangers, they're also empowering a new set of actors. And you're going to meet many of these ingenious new actors in the next two days. Um, but they include not only extraordinary individuals, but the NGOs that they form and found and, and join. Um, they include. Um, resourceful private sector corporations, and they include emerging states uh, as well. Uh, and in each case, for all of these new actors, um, the information revolution and the global economy have extended their reach and very much enhanced their role. And so I guess our thought was that if we are, and, and most importantly, I should say, it's created a new imperative for collaboration among them. And our thinking was, that if we are to match the power of the solution to the size of the problem, we would have to be talking about partnerships, that partnerships is the only way to get from here to there, that we'll have to learn how to combine, to form alliances, to share risk, to share responsibility, uh, and to collaborate in, in the peaceful management of change. Um, so over the next two days, what you will hear about is successful partnerships of this sort that have emerged um, partnerships in which you see the leadership, very fluid uh, management, in which leadership will shift from one actor to the other according to the task at hand. Um, but more importantly, you'll have the opportunity uh, throughout the next two days to explore partnerships among you, which takes me to your role. We're going to ask that you work to erase the barriers between teacher and student to erase the barrier between speaker and audience, to imagine new alliances, to find new allies, and to begin the sort of slow but rewarding process of forming new partnerships and refining your strategies so that you can achieve uh, these bold goals that you have. Now, what we'll do is that we will introduce you to each other so you can share best practices and lessons learned. We'll introduce you to foundation leaders who've got their own theory of change, their own track record, their own means of measuring impact. We'll introduce you to uh, heads of regranting organizations who not only have tested strategies that you can then follow, but they offer an easy means of easy vehicles for giving. And then finally, we will introduce you to agents of change who can provide practical, practical guidance on what it takes to get the job done. So we're going to ask that tonight and in the two days ahead that you will turn your tables into your own village green, that you will start teaching, uh, that you will start networking, you'll start learning, you will meet people that you haven't met before, try to sit next to someone you don't know, uh, and get to know them. And thank you so much for being a part of us. After our meal, Paul Brest, the president of the Hewlett Foundation, will introduce our keynote speaker. 
So until then, enjoy one another's company.